Okay, let's use VH dissector to go through the relevant anatomy of the kidneys and the adrenal glands. So first thing I think to do is to, let's go up all the way up above the abdomen because I'll make another presentation that'll just go through the abdominal contents and the pelvic contents without the uh, kidneys and the adrenal glands. So obviously in this view, we are in the uh, chest cavity. Here's the heart. Here's the lungs. And of course, here's the relevant fissures. Let's start going down through the abdomen. Now let's go down to the level of the kidneys. And where is that going to be? On the right side, the liver has a tendency to push that right kidney further. So should, we should encounter the left kidney first. And sure enough, we do. So here is the left kidney right there. And right above it is the adrenal gland. You can see that inverted Y shape. Over here on the right is the right sided adrenal gland. Right above it is the inferior vena cava. Here's the aorta. So as we move down through the kidneys, we begin to see the right adrenal gland take shape. Here's the left adrenal gland getting ready to move out of the way. Now we can clearly see the kidneys. In this image, and I'm going to leave the labels on so you can see, um, here we have the cortex of the kidney. Here's the adrenal. And then let's look at the renal vein here. So the left renal vein crosses over the aorta in that classic relationship that we keep talking about. So left renal vein crosses over the aorta, and here it is draining into the inferior vena cava. But on this guy, take a look at what happens here. He actually has what's called a retrocaval left renal vein too. So here it is. He has a renal vein that goes over the aorta, and he has one that goes under the aorta. It actually divides, and they both join up into the inferior vena cava. Now, I can promise you every surgeon who would fix this guy's abdominal aortic aneurysm would love to know before he puts his clamp on that aorta that there's another vein right behind him uh, that he could potentially tear. So this is a, a, an anomaly. It's uh, not common. Uh, I would guess 0.5% of people have it, maybe even less. Um, so, and you can see uh, on the, uh, as we move up, <clears throat> you can see on the left side, here's a branch of renal vein that goes and goes underneath the cava. So here's inferior vena cava. Look over here. Here's the uh, renal fascia. I'm going to move up a little bit towards the head. So here is Morrison's pouch. Here's the right kidney. And as we move down towards the feet, we begin to see renal fascia take place. So here is para-renal fat. Here's peri-renal fat. And here is gerota's fascia right there. And like I said, some textbooks will, will tell you that gerota's fascia um, is just on the kidney proper. But uh, I don't think that's true. I think that what we see when we're in the operating room is this right here, where gerota's fascia actually fuses with the anterior aspect of that uh, kidney on both sides. So let's take a look and see if we can tell where the renal artery is. So let's move up towards the head. Here is the pancreas. And remember, the pancreas is retroperitoneal. So the retroperitoneum includes the pancreas and these main vessels here. The inferior vena cava, here's the portal vein. Here's the aorta. Again, here's our adrenal glands. Here's the right crus of the diaphragm here. And you can see uh, there's something coming off of the aorta. That's probably, and at this level, let's follow it up. If I can follow it up, it's branching. And because it's branching, it's telling me it's probably going to go over. There it is. There's splenic. So here's splenic artery. It's not a curly cue like what we normally see. Here's splenic vein. So if that truly is splenic artery that comes across there, and we follow it, 
as it goes downstream towards the feet. Let's follow that. In fact, let's use VH Dissector and highlight it. Nice that it highlights red for us, tells us it's an artery. Follow it through, and it's coming into the trifurcation right there of the celiac trunk. So this is common hepatic, this is splenic, and left gastric here. So this now tells us it's the celiac trunk. Now as we move down towards the feet a little further, there comes the superior mesenteric artery. And we know that the superior mesenteric artery sits adjacent to the superior mesenteric vein. So here's the artery and the vein. And those two structures lie right beneath the pancreas, the head of the pancreas. So here we have uh, right kidney, and we can see medulla in here. And on some of these, we can actually make out the pyramids. That's pretty subtle. Here's a pyramid here with a minor papilla there. Here's a, a calyx, mi minor calyx going into a major calyx. Now let's see if we can find the ureter. And I told you the ureter is found commonly sitting on top of the psoas muscle. So here's our psoas muscle, okay? Let's see if I can find the ureter by finding the calyx of the kidney and following the calyx out. And I think that this is, it says renal pelvis on the left, stains purple. Now let's go over here and see if, there we go, there's pelvis. Keep your eye on the purple structures here. Keep your eye right here. And as we trace it down, there it is, sitting right on top of the psoas uh, major muscle. There it is, that little tiny ureter right there. What's happening over here on the right side? Let's color it up again. There it is, right on top of the psoas major. Let's follow that little tiny structure all the way down until we see where it goes. So here it is on the right, here it is on the left. Let's follow these little purple dots down, and hopefully they should take us and join into the bladder. If you remember from uh, the anatomy of the uh, kidney, the bridge goes over the water, so we expect the ureter to cross over the bifurcation of the common iliac where it splits into the internal and external iliac. So here we can see the ureters really well, right there and right there. So let me paint them purple again. Let's follow the ureter down. Follow it. It's going laterally like it should. Here it is. Right there. Now it's coming into the back side of the bladder, right where it should. So here's our bladder, here's our uh, left ureter. I suspect our right ureter is right there. Hard to see. And since this is a male, uh, a male specimen, here we have a urinary bladder, and then we have prostate, and of course rectum. And then here we have the levator ani muscles. So we have looked, using this, we have looked at the kidneys, the adrenal glands, the ureters, the bladder, and learned that we always go from what we know to what we don't know. Well, let's follow this aorta. So here's aorta, stain it red. Let's follow it down until it splits. It's beginning to split here into the common iliacs. Here's the ureter. And here's the split. So our ureter isn't exactly running on top of it just yet. Here we go. Now the bridge goes right here. So we call this, they call the ureter the bridge. In this case, the blood is running under the water. I never really understood that mnemonic. It never helped me that much. So now I'm losing ureter. That might, I'm not sure where it's at. Where did it go? Well, I've lost it. So let's go back up until I can find the ureter again. 
Remember, I know it's on the psoas muscle. So I know it's going to be on the... So here we have the testicular vein. That's really small. So here it is. There's the ureter. Right there. Ureter, ureter, right there. There it goes, crosses over. It's right there. Follow it down. Right there. It goes lateral to our sigmoid colon, which is here, right here. This is sigmoid colon. Lateral to sigmoid colon. This would be your line of tolt, this plane right here. Here's the ureter coming down, and we again, it goes into the backside of the bladder right there. So as we move back up, this fascial plane is going to be a white line of tolt. Now, I've stained the so as muscles so let's take it all the way back up to the very top and i should over here i should put our cross section on so you can tell where we're going to be at so So here you can you can see where our fellow is located. Let's go over here to our tools. And while we're here, let's just take a really quick look. Let's follow the inferior vena cava up. Here's that right renal vein. You can see how short it is compared to the left renal vein. So if I was going to donate a kidney, um, they would probably take your left kidney because it gives them a lot more vein to work with as opposed to potentially getting in this area here that's really tiny and not a lot of um, space to work with. Okay. So now let's move up. Here's the aorta. There was right here superior mesenteric artery. Here, just a centimeter above that, is going to be our celiac trunk. Here is splenic vein forming into the portal vein. Here's head of pancreas. All of this is small bowel. This is stomach. Stomach's got some food in it. Here is the outlet of the stomach. This muscular area right here, really muscular area, right in here of the stomach is the pylorus. Right there, you can see the folds of the stomach right through the pylorus, and then we come into the duodenum. But we'll hit on that in another video where we talk about the uh, GI tract proper. Okay. So that does it for uh, a quick intro to uh, see cross sections of the kidneys, the adrenals, ureter, and uh, we'll go further and cut another video for the uh, abdomen and pelvis.